Hello everybody, it's Reverend Tim Yao here, Associate Priest at St Peter's Church in Cringleford and welcome to your service of the word today. Uh, just as a rule of thumb, all the words that you'll need will be on screen and you will see uh, words in bold, those are the ones that we say together. So we're going to have some hymns uh, during our time of worship and all the words should appear on the screen. Before we begin, I just want to say a warm welcome to our friends at Cavill Court who will be joining us uh, with this service today as well and for all our friends and those who are new to St Peter's I also say welcome. Let's start with a moment of silence. God is spirit. Let us worship him in spirit and truth. The Lord is with us. Let us praise his name together. Almighty God, your son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We shall now have a reading from Exodus chapter 16. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked towards the desert and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We shall now have our first hymn. Uh, the hymn is How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds.
holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty. We long for the fire of God's cleansing to touch our unclean lips, for our guilt to be removed and our sin wiped out. So we meet Father, Son and Holy Spirit with repentance in our hearts. In a dark and disfigured world, we have not held out the light of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In a hungry and despairing world, we have failed to share our bread. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. In a cold and loveless world, we have kept the love of God to ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins and open our eyes to God's truth. Strengthen us to do God's will and give us the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today, you might have noticed we've picked up on the themes of God's provision and God's bread. And so now we have our next hymn, Bread of Heaven. Today's collect prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy, and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We shall now say the words of a psalm together. If I say uh, the first part of the verse and then a bit after the red diamond, you say the second part of the verse. So he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down upon them manna to eat and gave them grain of heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He sent them food in plenty. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and led out the south wind by his might. He rained flesh upon them as thick as dust and winged fowl like the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp and round about their tents. So they ate and were all filled, for he gave them what they desired. He prayed together. God, our deliverer, as you lead our ancestors through the wilderness, so lead us through the wilderness of this world, that we may be saved through Christ. 
Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now it's time for our gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, one God who was and who is and who is to come, the Almighty. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John chapter 6, starting at verse 24. Glory to you, O Lord. Once the crowd realised that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works of God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what sign then will you give us that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said, sir, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, the bread of life. I don't know uh, how you remember growing up. And do you have favourite smells, uh, especially around mealtimes, those things that conjure up those images of being young and being like really, really hungry? You know, most of us now um, have the food when we want it and how we want it. But I remember being a kid and always feeling hungry. I don't know, it's about all that growing you have to do. Uh, but I remember the smell of my mother baking in the kitchen. And when you're the hungriest, you can, ah, oh, you know, you could feel your stomach churning and, and gripping and because you were desperate for the smell, the taste of that bread that was going to come. In fact, supermarkets do that, don't they? If, I don't remember the last time you went to a supermarket, but they almost pump the smell of that bread around the place because it just encourages us to buy. You know, oh, I'm so hungry. I could eat that. It's so evocative, isn't it, of, of that just a basic the everyday sustenance, that's something that gives you, whether it's bread or rice or potato, something that just feeds you, kind of fills you up. I mean, obviously, a lot of us uh, don't have to do hardworking jobs uh, anymore. Or, But that remember that feeling of being so hungry. Well, we enter our story today, our gospel reading, with that echo of the the people of Israel wandering through the wilderness desperate and hungry taken away from Egypt looking to fill their bellies and wondering wouldn't it be easy to be back in the old country back in Egypt at least we had food then and so Moses and through God well God through Moses provides them with this um, wonderful and enigmatic and puzzling stuff manna which just means what is it well here we have Jesus in our gospel reading today and he'd just fed the 5,000. I mean, that is a, you know, a story in itself. All these hungry people following you in the wilderness. Then he leaves. Uh, he travels through the night. He does this incredible walking on water. Amazing. Uh, and appears back in Capernaum, where his kind of base of operations, where Peter's uh, family live. Uh, but they, the people he left on the east side of the lake think, where is he? They wake up and think, he's gone. You know, where's the one who fed us all this food? 
and they get on little boats and they travel over to Capernaum and they find Jesus there. And there is that sense of, when did you get here? <laughs> when did you get here? Well, uh, Jesus uh, has words for them, doesn't he? You know, Jesus says, um, look, you've come after me because you think you're going to get more bread. But, you know, he, he says it's not about that. This is not what it's all about. You know, these people followed him maybe because they were so hungry. Maybe the word had got around like there's this miracle man who will feed you. Remember, they lived in an agrarian society. It was oppressed by the Romans. There was kings and bureaucrats who took their took their share. You know, the taxes, you know, we all know what taxes are like. You know, you get your paycheck uh, and you think, how much is on tax? Do they really need that much? Well, for these people who lived uh, in a kind of sustenance, uh, uh, you know, living in a, a way where they grow their own food, they live off what they grow. If it's a bad crop, you've got very little, but you've still got to pay your taxes. So they knew hunger and they knew what it was like when you when it got a good harvest and you could fill your belly and here was a hungry people hungry oppressed people well there's lots of reasons people uh follow jesus today maybe you know you've followed jesus because of your, your need to met in the world today there are lots of people who who are still like need material things shelter fresh water clean you know clean clean uh, clothes food uh some people may come to jesus thinking if i come to jesus and then he'll meet my needs some people might come out of duty out of obligation because it's just you know what your family has done because it's a cultural habit and you never really thought about why you you follow jesus some people come out of respectability you know, they think, oh, if I come along, uh, I will look uh, respectable. I will look like I'm a, a, an up, upstanding person in society, uh, maybe get a position of uh, in the church or maybe get some recognition. You know, in one day, I think that has gone these days. But some people still may have those last vestiges of respectability. Some people come to Jesus for the experience. They want to feel good. They want to get inspired. They want to sense something emotional, have a sense of peace. Some people come because they want to perform. Let's face it. Whether you're a musician or a chorister or you write beautiful words, they come and they get an audience in the church and they get heard and, uh, and get seen. Some people come because of membership, because they want to be part of a club where there's friends, there's people who will look out for you, that there's a, a like a person in a collar will come out and knock on your door and say, how you doing? Uh, it, it feels like uh, being part of uh, a little um uh, membership club you get your membership card like a like a gymnasium or or uh, or something like that maybe people, people come for entertainment maybe they like the music choral even song or a big band or whatever it is people come to get entertained people come maybe for answers maybe you're thinking i'll, I'll come to jesus because i've got this this issue this problem i want it sorted out uh I, i've got these ex existential worries uh I just want to get that sorted. Maybe people come in disguise. Maybe they come in the sense that they've got things in their lives they want to hide. And they think, you know, whether it's personal failings or flaws or maybe even felonies. Maybe they've done something wrong. And they thought, if I come to church, I will look like I'm doing the right thing. But actually, I'm covering up some negative things. Or maybe people come to Jesus because of fear. Fear because they, they're worried about the afterlife, the next step. Maybe they've been taught about hell. They have a medieval sense of like, oh, fires and all that kind of thing. Or maybe they're uh, apart from their loved ones. You know, there's someone who's already gone onto the other side and they're so desperate to be with that person that they'll just do whatever it takes to get with them. You know, we all have our own particular agendas, uh, our own uh, things why we come to Jesus. But those things I just mentioned, you know, although they are uh, are reasonable you can understand why people do that but that's not what jesus wants from us you know jesus matters not because what he can do for us but because who he is it's not what he does for us whether it's uh you know sort us out answer our prayers feed us make us feel part of something bigger it's not about that stuff they then in themselves are not necessarily bad things but jesus is what matters who he is who he is 
you know jesus talked about having this the son of man which a phrase he used to talk about himself having this seal of approval like you know if you ever got a wedding ring you see that hallmark on there you know if your eyes are strong enough you can see that little it's that sense of this is authenticated this is a mark of uh, uh authenticity and a mark of ownership and saying this person this son of man this jesus when he was talking he's the real deal He's not just some miracle man, some crazy prophet, some wise teacher, some, uh, you know, a, a moral person. He's saying he he's the son of God. The son. Of God. I mean, just let that sink in for a moment. That, if that is true, that's huge, isn't it? So but the people don't get, the, get it. The people follow him. They don't quite get it. And they think, OK, so. So what must we do then? What have we got to do? to get this eternal bread, you know, to get this life everlasting. They think it's about, you know, like if I do if do more good, you know, there's society like if you if you're a good person, you get the thumbs up from God. If you're a bad person, you get the, the thumbs down from God. And the idea is to try, try and do as much good as you can. So you get the thumbs up from God. But that's not what Jesus is saying. You know, it's not about just doing good works and trying to earn God's favor. It's not saying, look, God, I've done all this good stuff. Therefore, you have to let me in. You have to give me the thumbs up. It's not about that. God is not like a, a divine clerk of works will come and inspect what you've got up to and say, like, mm, not so good this time. You get a mark here or like a driving instructor going fail, fail. You know, it's not about that. And it's not some kind of like uh, uh, scales, morality measuring scales where you, you, you kind of all your good deeds and bad deeds put up and it weighs in the balance. It's not a mechanistic thing. You know, God is our father in heaven, our father in heaven. Now, you may have a bad dad or a dad who wasn't around or an indifferent dad. But our father in heaven is a perfect father who loves us. It's about relationship, not regulations it's about how much he loves us he wants us and he wants to be with us and not about a set of laws what we fail or, or you know if you get above the line we fail if you get below the line and, and we'll get in if you get above the line so jesus answered them saying look the work of god is this to believe to believe in the one he sent now i don't know what that means to you believing believing is uh, it's not just a, a checklist. You know, later on, we're going to be saying a creed. Uh, and that's a thing meaning I believe. And it's not like I believe this tick. I believe that tick. I believe this tick. And if you have all the right beliefs all ticked, you get a thumbs up from God. It's not about that. It's not about uh, uh, trying to somehow uh, get all right thinking, get it all lined up, having the perfect theology or the perfect doctrine or the perfect belief system but belief is about trust it's about relying on it's about having faith in god's messenger jesus so what does it mean you know in that belief system believing jesus was about was about giving him control of every area of our lives let him sit in the driving seat our desires, our plans, our strengths, our weaknesses that we try and cover up. It's about giving him uh, uh, the direction of our lives. Let him look after them, let him put it in his safekeeping. It's about that moment by moment obedience, listening to God, saying, God, what is it you want me to do? Rather than following our own plans, following God's plans. It's about a relationship. It's about love, about the one who promised to live with us, live in us by his spirit and to guide us and direct us. To do his will you know if this is really if jesus came to set this heaven sent renewal movement that would transform and change the world then it's got to there's got to be change and because of that love because of that relationship you know we are supposed to be people of love people of holiness people of wisdom pursuing god's ways not our own ways but they ask him the people ask him, what, so, OK, what's this sign you've got? What is the sign that you're going to give us? Even though, like, just the day before, it fed 5,000 people, if not more, with bread and fish. But they talked about that kind of manna, the manna from heaven that Moses brought. But it wasn't from Moses, was it? It was God. God brought that manna and they were expecting the next 
want to come. The, 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 the Messiah, the king, the prophet, the one who's going to uh, sort everything out. They thought he would be just like Moses. But Jesus was doing things differently. Jesus tells them, you know, I am the true bread of heaven, the true bread of heaven, not manna that was here and then goes, not bread that you eat and then you're hungry the next day. Something more than that, something that goes on forever and ever. You know, that idea of bread. That's where we start in our conversation about that. something that fills you up. The smell, it gets you salivating, it sustains you. It's the everyday things. It's sustenance. And Jesus says, look, I am the bread of life. I am, is this statement. It goes right back to Moses in the burning bush. You know, when God spoke to Moses, revealed who he was. And goes, Moses said, who shall I send, say to the people who sent me? And God says, I am who I am. So in Jesus saying, I am the bread of life somehow there's that kind of resonance it, like a it, tinkling your ear saying that oh is he talking about being god i am the bread of life i am the one who will sus bring you sustenance and nourishment and will be the taste of god's transforming kingdom you know jesus is news the good news freezes to face life in the middle of the world's pessimism and despair, you know, this message unflinchingly claims that Jesus offers us this life infinitely more than anything else can give. The bread of life. Well, my prayer for all of us is that we will know that bread of life. And with that bread of life, we won't just keep it on the shelf or keep it in the cupboard or keep it in the pantry. We'll take it. Eat it, live it, and because of that, see that transformation and the kingdom come in our world. I'm going to say a prayer now. Bread of life, nourish your people this day and make them loving, holy and faithful for your glory's sake. Amen. We're now going to sing our next hymn, Just As I Am Without One Plea.
We're now going to say the words of the creed together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known to the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now it's time for our intercessions and our prayers. So when I pray, Lord, hear us, you pray, Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the promise of God to whom we now pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to be the bread of life for the world. Forgive us for elevating earthly appetites above devotion to you. Feed us with the knowledge of Christ so that we may recognise our sin and gladly repent in his name. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those whose daily need for healthy food, clean water and proper shelter goes unmet. And for those misusing what they have in the vain pursuit of pleasure. Feed them with all good things of Christ for life now and in eternity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on those whose lives have been broken by violence and crime. Feed them with hope and a new life in Christ. And bless our brothers and sisters in prison and those who minister to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Feed those who are sick or sorrowing with healing and consolation through Christ. We pray particularly for our friends, our families, those who we love. And meet the needs of others we know pers personally to be in want and in whom we now name silently in our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful Father, you have heard the prayers of your people in the wilderness and fed them with bread from heaven despite their sin. Graciously hear us today and feed us too with the bread of life from heaven. Even our Lord Jesus Christ, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Together we say, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let's say the words of the prayer that Jesus taught his followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and for ever. Amen. And now for our final hymn together. Alleluia, sing to Jesus.
Jesus, Lord of time, holders in your eternity. Jesus, image of God, travel with us the life of faith. Jesus, friend of sinners, heal the brokenness of our world. Jesus, Lord of tomorrow, draw us into your future. Amen. And may God, who gives patience and encouragement, give you a spirit of unity to live in harmony as you follow Jesus Christ. So with one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today for our act of worship. And I pray uh, that wherever you are, God will be with you and you'll have a great day. Goodbye. <laughs>